Today's video, we're gonna go over the diagnosis of posterior shoulder instability. Ah. So posterior instability is much less common than anterior instability. Only makes up about two to 10% of all instability cases. I did a very in-depth video on anterior instability. I'll leave that link in the description, but definitely don't click on it just yet. You gotta wait till the end, all right? So from an arthrokinematic standpoint, when I go into flexion, and I go into horizontal abduction, or I go into internal rotation of the shoulder, all of these motions are going to push the ball posteriorly or backwards in the socket. So like anterior, anterior instability, certain sports that put your shoulder joint into this position over and over and over again may create a little bit of instability on the backside of the joint. Another unique thing about posterior instability is the axial forces at the hand driving the shoulder back into the socket, right? So if we have Michaela here and she's doing a push up or doing a bench press, the bench press, the weight of the bench press is pushing her shoulder backwards in the socket. So in some folks, they can end up with some instability in the back of the joint because they do a lot of posting within their sport. They have to put their hands on the ground or they do a lot of bench press or supporting something out in front of you. Maybe a football lineman pushing this way constantly. It's driving the ball posteriorly in the socket. And just like anterior instability, you can have a posterior dislocation. So if I'm playing a sport and I have my arm across my body and then I fall down, hit the ground and push that ball posteriorly in the socket, I can dislocate out the backside, just like with anterior instability. So from an objective examination standpoint, we wanna take a look at internal rotation, horizontal adduction, and also flexion, right? So we wanna start by individually assessing each movement because if we combine all the motions all together, that creates more posterior force. So we start with the movements that create less apprehension and then work our way up to the movements that cause more apprehension if the patient's feeling pretty good, right? So the first thing we can assess is just an internal rotation. So essentially, I'm going to abduct the shoulder. I'm gonna go into internal rotation and just assess. Is this creating any of your instability? Nope. Okay, good stuff. You can also check flexion fully overhead. Is this creating any of your instability or apprehension? And sometimes patients will just stop you, they'll guard, they'll say, hey, I don't want my shoulder to go up there because I think something's bad is going to happen. And that, again, is just an example of someone who might have some instability posteriorly. And the last motion we can assess is horizontal adduction, just like so, All right? If the patient still has no apprehension, we can start to combine some of these tests. So I can go into flexion, horizontal adduction, internal rotation, and if I want to be really mean, I can have a posterior force here too. Right? And the patient is still having zero apprehension, I'm starting to think maybe this isn't posterior instability. To go along with the video today, I have a little gift for you. It's an evidence-based cheat sheet for shoulder instability. It's a four-page PDF that goes over everything you need to know about shoulder instability. We go over prevalence, anatomy, joint arthrokinematics, risk factors, and different types of instability, causes of instability, whether or not your patient should undergo surgery or have conservative care like physical therapy, and finally, rehab implications for all the different types of instability. So if you're looking to get up to speed about shoulder instability in less than 10 minutes, then this PDF is for you. I'll leave a link in the show notes in the description. Go ahead and click on that and then download it and then get back to what you're learning about right now. Jerk test, stabilize the scapula, bring the arm up into 90, internally rotate at the shoulder. From here, I apply an axial load, pushing the ball into the socket. I'm gonna go into a deduction, back and forth. A positive special test is going to be a sudden sharp pain in the back of the shoulder with or without a painful click or clunk. Kim test, we're gonna be seated with some back support. From here, I'm going to abduct the patient's shoulder to 90. From here, I'm going to take my hand and place it on the humerus. I'm going to imply a inferior and posterior force. So I'm actually trying to pull the shoulder into me and pull it down slightly. I'm also gonna apply an axial load, so pushing at the elbow, pushing the ball into the socket. And from here, I'm gonna go at 45 degrees up and across the body just like so. So posterior, inferior, axial, and then 45 degrees up and across the body. A positive special test would be sudden pain in the back of the shoulder with, and with, with or without a painful click or clunk. Now, Kim would also be extremely upset if you didn't like this video and subscribe to the channel. And you do not want to disappoint Kim, so do it. Posterior impingement test. Take the patient's arm, abduct up to 90. 
I'm going to externally rotate, go into 10 to 15 degrees of horizontal abduction, and then I'm going to maximally externally rotate here. A positive special test would be the reproduction of the patient's familiar symptoms in the backside of the shoulder joint. Posterior apprehension test, we're going to abduct the patient's shoulder to 90 degrees. From here, I'm going to apply an axial load, so trying to push the ball into the socket. From here, I'm going to simultaneously adduct and internally rotate while maintaining my axial loading. And this produces a sharp sudden pain in the back of the shoulder with or without positive popping or clunking. That'd be a positive special test. Dynamic posterior instability test. So have your patient pretend like they're throwing a baseball and they're going to stop their arm when they would release the ball normally. So go ahead and give me a throw and then release, excellent. And from here, I'm going to extend the patient's elbow. I'm gonna flex up to 140. I'm gonna have them resist an upward force. So push down, good. And a positive special test would be sudden apprehension or pain in the backside of the shoulder joint. So now you know a lot about diagnosing posterior instability, but you still need to know about posterior instability's cooler, older sister, anterior instability. I have a video for you in the corner that's how to diagnose anterior instability. Go ahead and click on that link and I'll see you there.